Congressman Burchett, always great to see you, my friend. Welcome back to Washington Watch. Thanks for having me back on, brother, and it is a pleasure. Well, listen, let's start with this shocking new report, possibly 300,000 plus illegal immigrant children are missing. What does this tell us about the Biden-Harris administration and the border crisis that, uh, again, I'll underscore, they created? Absolutely. It shows that they're a complete failure. And I was listening to um, NPR by accident on the way in today. I'm coming back here to my home office. And uh, I saw I, they were they were on the attack on Trump on on the border. So I guess word's gone on high. You know, the there's a book called uh, The Art of War by Sin Su, and he says, know thy enemy, know thyself. And, you know, our enemy right now is telling us that we created this problem, when in the reality we know we didn't. And the legacy media is just barking out the talking points, ringing the bell, so to speak, like Pavlov's dog, and we come salivating because this is this. there could be nothing further from the truth. Kamala Harris was in charge of the border. Then all of a sudden they decided to put out that she wasn't. If you saw when that happened, that was during a committee, um, uh, appropriations committee, that the chairman put that out. And then all of a sudden, all the press, all the Democrats had their talking points. Folks, this is the deep state. This is, it's not a swamp, it's a sewer. This is what's going on in our country. They're trying to recreate history. And then you've got a group of Americans that are actually believing this garbage. And they want nothing more than to destroy this country. And they're on their way to doing it. Yeah, it's it's stunning. And the, uh, the ability to uh, twist and dodge and change the narrative is just amazing. In fact, I mean, going on right now at, at the Democrats' convention, uh, they're literally attempting to craft a narrative that Harris is tough on the border and that Donald Trump, Speaker Johnson, Republicans stopped a bipartisan border security deal uh, that would have closed the border, they said. Uh, are, are they hoping somehow, Congressman, that the American public really don't know what H.R. 2 was all about? Well, currently, America does not know because no one's telling them, and you're exactly right. It allowed up to 5,000 people a day over the border before it enacted some sort of border wall, which I guess would just appear out of nowhere. So 4,999 people coming over your, our border illegal, murderers, rapists, everything you can imagine, every every criminal, every mentally ill person in Central America coming right over our border up to that point at 4,999, and they were okay. So that's what this bill did. It, 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 it codified those folks coming into our country so they would be here more or less legally. It is It was a bogus piece of legislation. As you know well, they blame it on Trump. Heck, I, they should have blamed it on me because I came out two weeks prior to Trump even saying anything about it. I said, this is awful. This thing is terrible. And this is not what we need. This is not a start. This is putting into law 4,999 people a day coming over our dadgum border. The media lies but we just we've got to start playing hardball, Jody. We've got to quit this wringing of hands and 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 circling up and saying, "Oh, we'll we'll let's let's negotiate." There is no negotiation. This presidential election, this Senate election, this congressional election is for the future of this country, bar none. We are standing at the abyss. We are staring over into this deep dark abyss, and we have a chance to step back from it, and uh, by electing Trump, or we can go forward and not do anything and let Kamala Harris continue ruining this country. Because I guarantee the gloves will come off. If they get the House, the Senate, and, and the White House, it's over. Everything we fought for for the last over 200 years is over. Yeah, it's, it's frightening. People have to pray. They have to vote. They have to stand. And now is the time for that line to be drawn in the sand. You know, on, on another issue, I know the military is important to you, your your family, your dad, your parents, and uh, it's just in you. But the Democrats, uh, uh, as they rolled out vice presidential uh, candidate Tim Walz, I mean, he's got all sorts of problems, uh, not the least of which is the ability to tell the truth. And that has been underscored as in reference to his military record. Your thoughts on Walz? Well, I think he's he's created, and he's it doesn't matter what the truth is anymore. If if there was something more to his record, if there was if if, it, if the Republicans were lying, 
you would have every editorial chief in the country. They've already gotten their words from on high, from the Democrat leadership. Every TV station would have jumped in to defend him. You've noticed they've kind of brushed over that and gone away with that because they don't care, because they know. I mean, this is the party that elected Bill Clinton, for goodness sakes, a legitimate draft dodger against George Bush Sr. And granted, he was a moderate by my standards, but he was a heck of a lot better than, than Bill Clinton was. And that's the man we elected. Uh, over and that is what the press sold us, and they will sell us everything. Young people don't understand that the fight that went on these these rifles behind me. They were talking taking off people that my father killed in the Second World War in the Pacific. This is you know it, it. This is the world we live in. This is the reality of our military. It's not somebody sitting behind a desk. It's men and women that have to go in horrible places and do horrible things to bad people. And when they candy coat this stuff. And they push these people out and they allowed to lie about their history. It spits in the face of people like my father. It spits in the face of my uncle, whose 48 star flag is in my office in Knoxville that was draped over his casket. And, and you know, it just it just infuriates me. And that's but that's well, the world. Absolutely. We As well, it should. And yet I, w I w watch and see all this. And uh, in spite of there being uh, what so many uh multiple people sending letters and uh, talking about this. Still, last night, uh, the Democrats roll out this continued claim that Waltz was a command sergeant major in the National Guard. I mean, they, they just uh, continue to roll this out. What, what does all this tell us? We've got uh, about a minute left. It tells us that, that their narrative works because they continue to lie and they don't change it. And they know it's working because Americans are gullible. We have we don't stand up for the conservative folks just get rolled over. We have preachers that are afraid to preach the gospel. We have men and women going to school board meetings protesting that their children are being taught pornography and labeled domestic terrorists. We have people standing up for the sanctity of life, which the Democrat Party does not stand up for, that, that are labeled as domestic terrorists because they pursue their First Amendment rights. Do not kid yourself. Get off your butt. And if your preacher doesn't preach the gospel and tell it like it is out of the Bible, you need to get another preacher because at the base of it, that's where we're losing our foundation, Jody, and we're losing our guts and we've got to take this country back. No question about it. We are losing it. And and we've got, you know, up it's to this time. point, they're going to take us without a shot. And here about a yep. month ago, they took their shot. Got to go. Congressman Tim Burchett, always an honor to have you. Thank you for uh, being on the tip of the spear in so many ways.